As far as the court process, we've spoken to a local attorney who feels the case against Gloria Williams is pretty open and shut. Randy Reap is a lawyer who says if it's obvious that Williams had Kamaya the whole time, it should be a simple case, particularly if Kamaya can corroborate that. He expects the trial to be over within six to nine months. Charges have been filed against her. There's no statute of limitations problem because of the nature of the crime. So she's going to be charged with a first degree life felony in Florida, and she's going to be looking at a substantial amount of prison time, if not life in prison. Reap says because Kamaya was likely not injured during the kidnapping, it will be challenging to determine what William's sentence will be, but he expects it's going to be many, many years, as he said, if not life. Alicia? And we are taking a deep look into the psychology behind what happened and how it may affect the victim and the two families caught right in the middle of all this. Forensic psychologist Dr. Stephen Bloomfield says the young victim will need a lot of help to process the last 18 years of her life, a life growing up under the name Alexis Manigo and not her actual birth name, Kamaya Mobley. She's going to wonder why it happened to her. Was there something she did? Obviously, that's not true. She was an infant. Now, Bloomfield says a highly trained professional is going to have to help her sort out her life, and that trained professional is going to have a real challenge because this is such a rare case involving a woman who had no idea she had been abducted as a baby. Scott? Well, there's so many questions in this case about methods police used to solve the case that went cold almost two decades ago. With me now is our crime and safety analyst, Gil Smith. He was on the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office when Mobley was taken back in 1998. Gil, can you remember this case, what it was like for you at all? Oh, I can remember it perfectly. As soon as I heard the name, it took me right back to 1998. Mm -hmm. Police worked so many cases over their careers, and it's hard to remember particular cases. But Kamaya Mobley is one that just about everyone remembers because it just took the Sheriff's Office by surprise. Everyone was involved, just about everyone was involved in the Sheriff's Office and working on this case. So what went into this crime? Um, was the mom, the, the, the fake mom, I guess now we can call her, was she skilled at being able to forge something like this and pull this off? What would go into that? Well, she was able to keep the child. Um, if she went back to her home, maybe she was away from home for a long period of time, several months. Then she comes back with Kamaya. Otherwise, people would say, wait a minute, you weren't pregnant. You know, how did you have this child? But if she was away from home for a long period of time, then it is possible. And then she was able to forge documents, forge a birth certificate, and throughout the child's life, no one thought to try to authenticate the documents because she did have to enroll her in school and, and give her medical attention. So she had to have some type of documentation that this was her child. You're saying she had a, a criminal background that we had saw in the years leading up to that prior that gave her some idea of how to do this? Right. Now, she was um, charged with uh, welfare fraud at one time and I believe some worthless checks. So somehow, I guess she was familiar with how to forge a document. She must have done such a good job where she could um, forge this uh, a birth certificate mm -hmm. and use that throughout Kamaya's life to um, validate her. As soon as police get the DNA, I mean, what are they doing here in the last six months or so when they're leading up to this? They're getting a tip somehow that something's going on. Yeah, it's hard to tell. That'll come through the investigation because over the years they received thousands of tips. Mm -hmm. And even uh, as recently as the last few years, they still have been getting tips. This tip led to this person where they believed this was going to be Kamaya because the birthday was the same. So now all they had to do is um, get a DNA swab of her and compare that to whatever they may have had at the hospital back in 1998 or compare it to the DNA of the parents to authenticate that, yes, she is the child of these, of these people. The... The jailing, the process of transferring her between families, this is going to be one of the most complex, I guess, familial things we'll ever see. Um, what she's, uh, I think she's 18 now. Law enforcement can't compel her to go to one family or another. How does that process Yeah, work? this is going to be very difficult, you know, even before that. Um, just what, what is her name? What does she call herself? Alexis? Kamaya? Um, the family here is very excited to see her. But sure, remember, they should be. Yeah, they should be. But to Kamaya, um, these are strangers. I mean, do I call this person mom? Do I not? It's going to take a lot of counseling for her and probably on from the rest of her life to really deal with this. Someone you thought was your mother all your life, all of a sudden you find out this isn't your mother. These are your parents here. It's not just a quick adjustment. Oh, let's come in and hug and sit down and have dinner and talk. But uh, now that she's 18, she's not a minor anymore. 
it is eventually will be up to her. She will have the right to choose to deal with this how she chooses. Exactly. It's not a custody issue anymore because, like you said, she is 18. It's a matter now of her adjusting uh, to, for, to this um, for the rest of her life. How is she going to um, move on with her life? Is she going to come back and live in Jacksonville? Is she going to stay there? Uh, I'm sure it's really going to require a lot of assistance for the people that she thought was her family in South Carolina to help her through this process. They really have to be supportive of her and not be combative, hopefully, with her natural parents to help her adjust through this. Her case has changed hospitals and how they do policies for the last 18 years. Has that been a positive thing, a change for security of hospitals? Oh, I think it has been great. My daughter was born 18 months prior. Uh, to this and the security measures weren't in place that, that are now mm -hmm. as far as having um, ID badges and stickers and bracelets on the child and you know electronic devices on doors so that no one can leave that's great so these this may have happened um, you know afterward if they had not done that but that's just how we do as a society we progress and make better changes as we find out the flaws Gil Smith, thank you so much. We'll be following it with you here in coming weeks. We all will. Well, this case is a great example of how important tips are to investigators. They come through 2,500 before finding the one that finally led them to Mobley. Alicia? Just amazing. Kamaya's family in Jacksonville was just overjoyed when they got the call from Sheriff Williams telling them the baby taken from them nearly two decades ago had been found alive and well. This morning, they tell us they are heading to South Carolina to see her. They said that seeing her face was amazing, and they say that she seemed happy, healthy, and excited to meet everyone. Family says right now their main focus is Kamaya. Her biological father, Craig Aiken, says that they did talk with her on FaceTime, but they didn't want to ask about the last 18 years just yet. I saw her the day that she was taken. And I hadn't seen her uh, since, and I don't want her to scare her away. So I'm going slow motion, because I want to keep her now. I don't want to run her. The family says they were very angry when this first happened. That's gone now. They don't have time to be angry anymore. They just want to let authorities take care of Gloria Williams so that they can take care of Kamaya. And our coverage of this incredible story does not end here. You can go to newsforjax.com where you find uncut video from yesterday's news conference announcing the break in the case. Also, you can look back at our archives showing the frantic moments back in 1998 when Mobley was taken. And still ahead on the morning show, we're digging much deeper into Gloria Williams' past. What our I-team has found out about her, that is coming up at 7.30.